Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. We're continuing some of our things of fixing up roses and everything. And one of them, that a technique that I use a lot, and I teach in my uh, Mastering Roses classes and stuff, which is very important, is the use of negative painting. And what I do in the um, uh, PR 101 Mastering Roses, we also talk about enhanced negative painting. Okay, so these are all options that you could use to correct roses. A lot of it, this is one reason why I paint the background at the same time as the painting the roses. So let me just show you, we'll talk about that again. Now I used it into the 30 day roses on several lessons and hopefully this will bring back that uh, that concept a bit because I know there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Okay, so background that I have, this is my standard board. This is a tempered uh, hard board. Um, and then I just gave it a couple coats of a gray kind of color here and sanded a bit. It's, it's, a, it's an 11 by 14, doesn't make too much difference. I've been filming all day today doing all kinds of fun paintings and stuff for the classes. Um, and so I just I just take a damp paper towel and wipe off my palette. This is my same palette that I use a lot of in my, with my flowers. Hansi Yellow, Darya Light Yellow, uh, Yellow Oxide, Naphtha Red Light, Pine uh, pine Green, and Burnt Sienna. Blue is the Thalo Blue, Red Violet, Quinacridone Violet, your real cool colors, and then some white. Okay, and I'm going to use a three-quarter inch brush and probably an eight or a ten. But let me just show you. So normally I come in here and I and I put a bunch of colors and stuff in for my backgrounds and start it up. You can start that a, a light uh, if you want. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll just do a little bit here. I love some of the colors that come from my uh, greens and my burnt sienna, my favorite colors. And then a little bit of yellow too. Look at that beautiful kind of a warm color going right up against this... Uh, this uh, cooler kind of gray. This gray I made is a neutral uh, gray right from it's um, um, the uh, medium gray at, that's in our line and a, a tiny bit of the medium white uh, and, but it keeps it kind of gray kind of gray and cool. So I'm just going to push a bit of that in and just kind of soften that a touch here. Matter of fact let's go the other way this time. I've been doing like this is like my fifth painting today. I've been doing a lot of the roses and stuff facing that way. Let's change it, change it this way. And so uh, we're going to be using some of the background. We'll put a rose in here. And again, I'm, you know, I'm not teaching any of the, the concepts of composition or anything like that. I just want to show you what a concept of negative painting. Okay. So an eight or a 10 here, let's work in a nice, soft, kind of a, maybe a pinky yellow or peachy colored rose. So reds, my warm and cool reds here, my warm red and my cool red and a little bit of yellow. Gives you a nice peach color here. And some white. Let's we Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna really kind of plow on some color here. And as I paint the rose, I'm gonna plan for negative painting, which means I'm not going to, I'm going to take this color. Now you never go all the way to white. This is just to let you know here, those some of you that have downloaded the value scale stuff, this is right about, it's going to dry to about a seven. It looks like an eight, it's going to dry to a seven. I should probably clean that off every once in a while so it's easier to see that. So it looks like an eight, it's going to dry down to a seven because we know the acrylics dry one down. So I'm just going to build some color there and uh, let's enhance this just a bit more yellow, nice peachy kind of color, a little darker right down here for this one. We'll push those together. We'll do kind of two together and maybe a little bud or something right off over here or just something in the, I don't want to get too involved into the painting. I don't get too involved in painting, but one of the things I do with my paintings is I sell all my paintings. And, you know, even when I'm practicing, I'll go ahead and finish it off and and uh, sell the painting and stuff. It's, uh, you know, professional artist, that's what you do. It's time, right? So I'm going to make this peach color a little darker, less white in it. And let's go in and push in Maybe a nice warm little yellow showing up in there too. Let's push in our center. Let's push in our bowl, the shadow bit of our bowl there. 
Now, what I want to do is I'm, I want to start visualizing and push the color here. So I'm getting a lot of color on the surface. I want to visualize and push the color here for to get some different looks. And I want to take some of it right out into my background, right out here like this, because I'm going to plan so some of this will become petals. Okay, this is a, a, a very nice a la prima technique that uh, really gives you a lot of interest. And so I want to come out here and just kind of what I call skip paint, just kind of tap the paint around the outside here. That's just going to create some movement, but I don't need it to really create some petals. Let's take some of this, um, these two reds and some yellow. Let's create a bit more of a darker version maybe down here. So you start your center just like we did in, um, you know, we've done, we've done this in the 30 Days of Roses. Those of you that are watching this video for the first time, I have an entire series of lessons, 30 lessons, 30 days I painted those and uh, to teach you some of these concepts and I'll push some of that in now let's come in and and uh, push just a bit up here maybe this is a little bud okay we'll just and but I want it all so blurry now we can come in in here and we can start and let's get it just a touch more yellow now we don't want to go to pure white never so I'm up here about a nine this time and I'll strike, pull down, and you know some of the other videos I did here, like this one that's over here, is uh, petal edging. Um, you know how to use the edging of the petals to, you know, to give you a different look and stuff to your roses. There's just a ton of different ways, but here I want to I want to build the petals a bit on the bowl. I don't want to build too much on the outside. So I'm going to concentrate on bull petals this time. Going a little lighter, pulling down. I can even uh, swirl some of this up and around, small little movements up and around. And just let the outside edge there though blur. Let's tap a bit of the darker color right there into that center and around. So I can reset that center. But I like this kind of stuff. This skip that color around a bit to create that movement there like that. Let's go a little lighter. We can a little yellow and a little lighter. So I'm coming as I'm getting lighter, this is a good rule of art. As you get lighter you get warmer. And I'm stepping off to the side and I can see that. So I know this is a lighter stroke. I can see it. I can see it there in my, my painting. I know that's a lighter stroke. Now, I might take some a little bit lower and just push that around a bit. That's a bit lighter, and I kind of like that coming right in there. And push the bowl there. So I got the bowl. Let's go a little lighter yet, almost to pure white, right up here into the front. And that's kind of pretty, right up there like that. That's just a nice light. And... Uh, very very light actually and let's put I'm adding just a touch of extender just to keep my color moving I I use it to kind of uh, go over I and mean, get the color to slide across the surface I you know it slows down the drying time a little bit and I'll work with that but it, I'm not a blender I'm a tone painter I paint the light and when I work a rose like this you notice I work very fast so you might have to put me on slow motion until you can see everything I do. But I have to paint fast, guys. I have to paint fast because I play with it. I am a solid left brain artist that will play with it. If I paint fast and I try to film it fast and do everything fast, then they actually come out better for me. Not quite as light, but almost uh, out here with this one here. And I'm just going to skip around a bit just to create some nice movement. I can reset that center, even a little bit of burnt sienna in there so the center color is just a touch different. Reset that center. It's that center and the bottom bowl that really make it a pretty rose. That is a beautiful color in there. 
Let's put some of that into this one. That burnt sienna and a little bit of that quinacridone color in there. That is just a pretty color inside of that. Okay, now let's go down to this other one, a bit darker. Everything about this one's going to be a little bit darker, so let's push a little more color, a little more red, a little more quinacridone, a bit of burnt sienna. Sometimes I'll tone it with just a touch of green, and that just gives me a nice dark toned color. Let's push that right out right out into my background because I'm going to use the background to paint the outside edges of the rose. And this leaves a rose that is uh, really quite a bit different than what I normally do. It's, and it is uh, one that really does sell really well for it. It's a very contemporary look. A little bit of that color. And I can just go right up in here like this, lighten that value to what we've talked about before, like a half tone, and just shoot one right into there to soften that look of the rose a bit. I can maybe just a bit of this, skip that around in there. And this is what I call to skip that around in there like that. Just, you know, look for some streaks and some movement. Don't paint the petals. We'll do that later here. And just get a nice light here, just like that. That's kind of pretty. Different. Okay. Now, so this will make actually a very pretty rose. It needs to have a, a bit of the light, not nearly as light as what the other ones are, but a bit of the light right in there, just like that. And that's maybe just one more light, slightly lighter strike. And then that's about all that rose really needs down there. Just a quick boom, there it is, tap, tap, and get out of there. Easy to say. <laughs> Easy to say. Very hard to do. You know, if you're like me, you want to just touch it, touch it, touch it, and then it's all one color. Yeah, <laughs> we do that. Okay, now let's take some of our pine green, burnt sienna, a little bit of that, that dark light yellow in there. It's a real pretty color. Let's come right out here and let's imagine an outside petal here. This is what I call the negative painting. So now I'm going to paint my background around my rose. Now this is what a lot of porcelain type painters and stuff do. You know, they, they, they'll they use the background to paint and shape their roses and their stuff around. And so we can use those techniques. I like that bit of Daria light in there. Let's come right back out in here like this. Now I can I can leave here so I can leave some... Uh, you know, really thin, and I can pull into the knot of the rose so that it it disappears a bit here. I can put it in a little bit darker. I can leave some of the background coming through like this to, you know, to give some shape to it. But I like this, this edging of it, and there's just all kinds of ways. I can come in a little closer here, make that look like two different, I mean, like the center and an outside petal there. So you've got to kind of imagine. Now, if you're doing some of this and you're not really good at the, the roses, you can certainly like put on a pattern and see it until you've taken some courses on designing and drawing roses and stuff. I'm going to drop in a bit more of a line here like that, or just some outside stems and stuff like that here. And yeah, it's kind of pretty. I like a bit of that Daria light into that green too. And I, hit, I hit some of that red right there. And that's kind of pretty. I just let it happen. So we'll drop that in. See, I can, I can blur, blur the back edge and cause that a receding edge back there by taking that color in, or I can make it more definite by just using almost like a stroke right up there like that and uh, leaving that definite mark that that's the, and that'll give the edge of the rose, see? So I can use this to shape up. I'm gonna draw it in just a bit, take some of that out. So it's actually my background color there, see? That's shaping the rose. That's creating the whole outside of the rose. A very, very different look here. 
and it's really a pretty look to the roses and uh, gives them this nice translucency or transparency probably gonna and much as I really don't want to do it too much tick and I just vary my greens and my burnt sienna and my darulite yellow that darulite yellow helps give you some transparency and a little bit of difference but I'm just gonna push that back just a bit I want to see some of that green color back down here though too as well here a little bit of that red violet cooler here so you see that that just makes a and I left that just a little blurry there I think I'm gonna leave that and they're just a bit blurry now we have, I have these really light roses here. Now let me show you that my bowl is not well defined. My rose is kind of going out there like that. And so it's not really well defined. But I am a professional, so I can fix it, okay? So you can use, you can use a negative painting on your bowl as well. Imagine your bowl and stuff coming in through here like this. You could use that negative painting to really kind of set the bowl and the reaching petals at, at a different look to them, just like that. So we can you can use it both. You can use it on the outside of the rows, and you can use it on the inside of the rows in here like this to create and leave some nice marks and movement here. That's what makes them kind of pretty. So I call these negative painted and um, then there's also the enhanced negative painting that I do as well. The, uh, but it just adds a lot. Now I'm going to take a little yellow and a little light and I can reset some of that nice warmth right over there. And I like to, you know, I'll, I'll work my bowl petals and stuff like that again, but I won't go out there to the outside. I want to keep this nice and light here into the inside here and some bull some bull shadow stuff coming up here like that maybe you know don't go out to that outside edge but you can do a little petal edging here to make like that petal show up there on the outside don't go out to that outside edge though just a bit of the movement there create that we want to create the outsides with our with our background though right here so just a bit of that pulling that around that's kind of nice and a little bit of movement there it's a very very different looking rose and this is one of the things I spend a lot of time trying and especially when I I paint fast trying to do things to create new and different looks of stuff you know and um, yeah it creates some real pretty looks let's get a little bit darker some of my reds not that quite cool but some nice deep reds and just drop a bit right there leave that outside edge there and just drop that that rose on that edge maybe back in through here I, I kind of like that one, just a touch darker and stuff there. We'll drop in a, another uh, line or so there. Now let's start putting some leaves. I like the pine green, burnt sienna, sometimes, and that darulite is real pretty. We'll start setting some leaves. And lately I've been coming in with just a second stroke with a little bit more darulite in it see and it just creates a a different color two-tone leaf that i like and yeah just i just try things so we'll push in some of these colors some ideas sometimes i leave it really really casual now we have these nice light roses here like this and very almost ghosty looking it, it they will really come to life when you varnish them and stuff um and let's take a lighter green so i'm a big advocate if you have light colored roses you should have some petals some leaves here that are actually the light as well and uh, pick up that light 
carry that light through. I'm a big advocate about that. Vary the lightness. Don't just make your leaves just one color, one value, one tone. Vary them as well. Let's get that nice light, some of that light in there. Like that. This is overall, though, pretty warm yellow greens and reds. We've got the cooler reds, but not a lot of the kind of bluish kind of colors in. Just different. You could take your, your leaves over to more of a blue green and stuff if you would like, and that would be different and, and nice. And uh, this is what I just call the brush dance, just moving some of those colors through. I like to do that. You can even do the negative painting with the light color coming back down through like that as well. I'm going to pump up this green one right here a bit more. Here. Maybe a bit bigger. Here. Like that nice edge right there on that one. Coming in, we can blur it just a touch to let it come in underneath that rose. And we might just for, you know, I always look, I, I like that little bing right there with that. So we might put one right, that'll be a bit light, probably value eight or so here. Just a bit there. Well, I like a bit of green coming off my finger there too. Just to uh, push that edge. Right up above that leaf, the edge of that rose, right up above that leaf. But you can see it gives you a very different look. And as artists, we should always be looking for the differences, the looks, where you start this negative painting. It's just such a, a really nice technique. Here, we'll get some of these variations of these greens. The other thing that's real nice is to take some of your, let's take some softer reds right into our greens, model that up, and push some of those colors right into your background as well. Carries those through a little lighter here. Just so you see some of those colors carrying through there. Now I have to decide, do I want to, then I always, you know, I'm a big advocate of, once you get it pretty much close to where you like it, go back and revisit your queen, your center of interest. And I'm going to put a lighter, warmer front right on her right here. Build that up a bit more here. Don't pull out too much. Leave that bowl in there where I like Right up there into the front. Push it right in. Don't always leave that bowl there, but maybe a, now I'll start to go up with the white. Remember, we don't use too much white. So now I'm getting up towards my tens here, but I don't want to get that too much. I don't want to lose my shadow there. Oh, that's kind of nice pushing up a bit. There we go. Leave some of that nice, strokey stuff going on. Just an edge there, like that. But I like all that, that negative painting kind of swirling around there. We could put a, leave that there. Now you could do it with dark, but I don't feel like my petal's out far enough. So I'm going to push my petal out a little farther and take the color like this and push it out out into that green create that blurry edge there like that and then I will come back in with some maybe even a touch of red violet some green burnt sienna maybe a touch of red violet and let's reset that outside edge there and see so you get this beautiful little harmony there and see that edge and it's like the edge of that that uh, petal of that rose here let's put it this darker color right in there you know pine pine green and red violet is about as cool and as dark as you can get and it's a nice 
beautiful contrast to use every once in a while in your rose in your painting just to get that ultimate contrast pine green and a little red violet it's an ultimate dark cool color and all paintings need to have some of that super cool let's take just a bit of that down there so as you can see it's it's a different look and uh, it's a real pretty look it's a um, softer look out through the, the outside uh, that you have because basically what you're doing is you're just applying the background you're taking the, you're painting basically the bowl of the rose and then you're using the background to really kind of paint the the um, outside petals of the rose so it's really kind of a neat technique let's take a little bit of light on the edge of our green here and this so I like these kinds of techniques so I like to explore them and and uh, try different things I like a bit of that movement there and that's just a, a nice uh, look now you can refine it more you know if you want I wanted to leave mine even rough here but you can certainly refine it if you want and uh, you know that's up to you you know smooth it out a bit or so I I love the all the pure all prima of stuff like this and colors and working and I love that little brush dance and you could negative paint your leaves too which you know you really should a few of them because that just keeps the uh, you know the the composition the leaves and the roses you know in in harmony with each other I'm gonna take just a bit of this color and just kind of close up this edge of this rose. What this does is you notice it'll turn the rose down just a bit here and I want this rose kind of falling down just a touch more. Maybe a bit of that reddish color inside just to break that movement so it's a softer little movement there. If you want you can darken down that inside in there. Touch more. It's kind of dangerous here because it's you know but see just a tiniest little bit more dark this does add just a touch more of interest to that rose but it's kind of a fun technique to do it I did this one into my classes and stuff there you can see using that the darks and stuff I use I use negative painting a lot I like to combine it with a lot of the uh, other techniques I use of petal edging and stuff like that and so it just gives you another look you can build up this whole library up here of, of um, you know techniques it becomes your toolbox what we call your toolbox and you can use those draw upon those to make some really pretty paintings okay and they're they're a heck of a lot of fun so give some of those a uh, give some of those a try now before I go, of course, you've made sure you hit the subscribe button, right? And the like button, please do that. Um, we are starting a whole new series over, and you have to go over to jansenartstudio.com. The links are up into the description. The links for everything I do are in the description. Make sure you go over there. If you haven't signed up for our newsletters off of that site, make sure you sign up to that newsletters. Now, when we do the newsletters, we don't, you know, you can sign up for anyone you want that you're interested in because we paint a large variety of everything from landscapes to wildlife to rose mulling to roses to you name it. You can sign up for just the ones you want. There's a section of it there over there called free videos. If you click that and then go down, you'll see that um, that uh, uh, paint with us, paint with me kind of a section there. Then that is where I'm joining with um, uh, four other teachers, four other YouTube teachers, and we're going to be painting all kinds of techniques starting with the very basics of color, simple six color set, and start with the whole thing. We're going to paint all genres from landscapes through flowers to even do some portraiture and stuff. So, and all those lessons are going to be free, but we're not going to, it's not going to be announced on the YouTube channel all the time because there's videos coming from other people and stuff as well. So, 
make sure that you find out where that is and if you sign up for those newsletters and stuff you'll get notified when videos are added in all those different categories in that whole area there uh, we're building a whole basically online uh, place for all of us to paint and then we're using uh, our forums and the academies over on Facebook academies of decorative art to discuss our paintings and stuff like that so you can post pictures of your paintings ask for help and everything so go over to the jansenartstudio.com make sure that you're part of that you know make sure you sign up on those newsletters because youtube will not be notifying you of everything that we're doing okay and all those lessons that are going to be on there and if you don't do that you're going to miss out on some of it because it's you know, we just sent out a simple notification. There's new videos in when we're when we've updated those those things. Okay, all right. So make sure you become part of that because it's gonna we're gonna have a fun summer into fall painting uh, over there on. It's gonna be part of this channel, but part of four other channels. So all coming together to build that. Okay, it's gonna be a lot of fun, and we're starting in just about a week. Okay, so get over there and do that so you don't miss out. Okay, all right. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good time. And I'll see you. And also post your questions and stuff over on the academies. And don't forget to comment. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. See you later.